Under the shadow of twilight comes a colony of mysterious bats from a distance. They fly to the Lucky Bat Elementary School and settle among the foliage by the school. Tenten Elementary School of Suqing Village in central Taiwan is this Lucky Bat School. The land is adjacent to green fields planted with rice, peanuts, and sweet potatoes that many people have depended on for their livelihoods. A group of kids playing, a bunch of hanging bats sleeping in the leaves. It seems so carefree. Which group is the happier? Dajahan In the temple, the believers pray for the good fortune. The bat sculptures, whose name is homophonic with blessing, can be seen everywhere in the temple. Beigang, called Bengang in the old days, is regarded as one of Taiwan's oldest towns. This town has inherited much ancient culture and tradition. Master Yan San Tai inherited his father's work on decorated parade floats for the festival parade and depicts historical stories and mythological legends on his artfully decorated parade floats. The key of Master Yan's trade is authenticity with no lack of attention to any detail during his construction of the floats. One week remains until Matsu's birthday now. The master craftsman must hurry up. Even Mistress Yen helps with the sewing of costumes for the kids. Grandmas are also busy volunteering, making incense bags for Beigang's Chaotian temples. The sounds from their sewing machines remind us of the sound of passing time. The grandmas express their devout faith through their needlework. They don't mind working hard, so believers visiting the temple can take home souvenirs of the peace they pray for. Working hard to the very last day, all remain calm during this bustling time. All tests passed, hopefully their work will attract every eye and win applause for Beigang's decorated floats. Early in the morning, the golden bats fly back to the eaves of their ancient local home, returning every year right on time for Matsu's birthday.
In Beigang, some folks call them upside down lotuses or matsu bats. In fact, these little fellows are called Myotis formosus flavus in the biologists' world. During the day, they enter a dormant state, and their body temperature and metabolism are lowered in order to conserve energy consumption. Every spring, they move from the mountains to the plains to have offspring. This is the most important event in their life. They pair up for mating in the fall, and the births occur in the following year. The pregnant bats huddle with each other during this time to stay warm and to protect each other. This is the wisdom of expectant mothers. On the first day of Matsu's celebratory procession through the streets, thousands of people throng into these prosperous temples. The grand parade of Matsu drives away evil and bad luck, while believers burn incense to worship her, an important annual event in Beigang. The artfully decorated floats are the highlight of this religious festival, and the opportunity to play a role on the decorated floats in the parade is every Beigang kid's dream. They have to get up early in the morning to dress up. Their parents, who have also played roles in the parades in the past, take their children to experience the excitement. The makeup is finished, the seat straps are secured. Costumes put on, spirits are high. Today is the day to enjoy being an immortal. The immortals, played by the children, scatter candies to the crowd, and this is also a climax of the parade. Picking up the candy is like holding a blessing from Matsu in their hands. The decorated parade floats used to be a sensation in Taiwan, but are only a remnant nowadays. As the judges award their scores, they are trying to preserve this traditional art form. Tangu Mr. Zhang Hanjia was born and raised in Beigang. He has been studying the golden bats for over 10 years. He used to be a very active Taiwanese environmentalist in his early days. He converted an abandoned elementary school health education classroom into the first bat museum in Taiwan. He tirelessly serves as the curator and leads a group of volunteers to study the bats in Beigang area. Beigang's sugar mill used to host a very healthy golden bat colony in the past, but the population of this colony has shrunken into single digits. Zhang cannot bear the decreasing trend of the golden bats each year, so he brings a volunteer, Jia Rong, an advocate for conservation, to visit every elementary school. 
来，放在你的手上，好吗？都不知道，后面也可以举手，后面也不知道。好，那奖品就留给前面的人了。好，就是你。Unexpectedly, bat guano is also a very good educational tool. June is the peak birth season for the baby golden bats. In order to measure the temperature of the roosting bat colony, Mr. Zhang invites his friend Zhou from the Endemic Species Research Conservation Center with his infrared thermal camera. With Zhou's device, they can locate the bat's favorite secret spots inside the Lucky Bat Elementary School. Gunju 开始。Wu Jia Chun is Mr. Zhang Hen Jia's capable assistant. She's the director and cameraman of the bat conservation video. Bat droppings are documented in the Compendium of Materia Medica, called the Sand Shining in the Dark. Wu Jiaqun and her older students collect bat feces, and through fecal analysis, they found that most of their diet are mosquitoes and other insects. The baby bats are born. The mother bats are licking their little darlings. Golden bats only have one baby per year. Unfortunately, not every baby bat can grow up safely, and some unfortunate ones die prematurely, which is so regrettable. On holidays, Wu Jiaqun helps her parents to harvest peanuts, but her favorite activity is to play dodgeball with her classmates. Wu Jiaqun's home is right outside the walls of her school. She has been a good neighbor of the Golden Bats since her childhood. Sometimes she also helped Mr. Zhang set up mist nets and harp nets to catch bats for research.
after the sun goes down, the moths fly out and become active. Japanese house bats also come out to forage. The insects must rush to escape. As it gets darker, the golden bats start to fly out. Because of the insects' phototaxis, their attraction to light sources, dazzling streetlights attract a lot of insects from nearby farmlands, and also lots of bats for the feast. It's time to go check the nets. Only two Japanese house bats were caught, but none of the targeted golden bats. After observing the bats, it's time to release them to go home. These children are really great. 是老师，也是爸妈的好帮手。看来我得暗中好好保佑他们。但是我们黄金蝙蝠越来越少，什么原因？你们知道吗？让我们继续看下去。哎，天气越来越热，我先去吃碗搓冰，消暑一下。It's worthwhile to investigate the cause of golden bat population decline. Is it due to habitat alteration by urbanization or overuse of pesticides? Who is the culprit? There is no dry land during May, but the land during June is like a sea of fire on the plain. The peanuts in the fields are about ready to harvest. The farmers are busy harvesting, and the tilling of the soil startles the insects. Smart egrets come to feast on the insects. Mr. Tang asked the village carpenter to build some bat houses. They are ready to be tested in Brother Kitchen Knives Organic Farm. Brother Kitchen Knife returned to his hometown in Yunling to start an organic agriculture farm as a change in his professional life in his middle age. In the friendly countryside, life seems very serene, but not spraying pesticides seems very silly to his neighbors. Two students have installed their bat houses in the field, and they are looking forward to having some bat tenants to help eat some of the insects. The abundant food here is a good nutritional source for the mother bats to secrete more milk for the baby bats. Japanese house bats often choose to live in buildings or bat houses. At the bat school's campus in the dusk, after sleeping all day, the first thing for the Japanese house bats to do is to find drinking water. The Japanese house bat brigade shows up even before sunset to catch insects. All are skillful and brave just like Pier Pan. After dark, 
The golden bat mothers also come out to forage. They have to leave their babies behind, and the babies sometimes cluster together for companionship. Some mothers will travel back and forth to breastfeed their babies all night. It looks like a storm is coming. Jia Chun is worrying about her little friends outside the classroom hanging in the leaves. Summer means the arrival of the typhoon season. It is a great concern for the mother bats because storms are the most stringent test for bats in the wild. Jia Chun is still thinking of her old friends. Will they be safe and sound in the stormy nights? The rain finally stopped. Leaves have fallen everywhere, and the teachers and students are busy cleaning up the campus. Suddenly, there is a fragile little life crawling on the ground. Jia Chun found it and is carefully bringing it to Mr. Zhang. Japanese house bats usually have a litter of two. I guess the mother bat must be very anxious for her lost baby. Let's try to find out whose baby this is. Ah, we found it. This baby must be from here. Let's put it back carefully. If we found the wrong mother, it may get kicked out. Then we'd have to find a nanny for it. Another baby bat fell to the ground. I heard that it was still breathing in the water just as Mr. Zhang answered the phone call. He rushed to the old house to rescue the baby bat. When a baby bat accidentally falls, some will be killed on the spot. Some will get picked up or eaten by dogs and cats. Only the very lucky ones survive. Let's dry it off first before it gets hypothermia. We need to rush it to Yunlin County's Department of Agriculture to get the volunteer veterinarian's assistance. The veterinarian provided the most suitable formula to feed the baby and added mealworms as a supplement. The little bat suckles with all its might, wanting to grow up healthy and to return to its mother's side. Jiaxun becomes a bat nanny after school, nursing the little bat at home. Her warm palms are like the mother's body temperature.
来，恁吼来看到咱的吉他兄，伊那只来为咱表演到即寸吼，布袋戏。削蚊子，在这里玩游戏，剪刀石头布。The Puppet Show Club of Swangshi Elementary School of Taipei is performing a story about golden bat conservation in the Bat Museum. The days of growing up are full of joy. The little bats are fully haired, and it's about time to leave their mothers. The day to fly solo for the first time is not far away, and then they will have to rely on their own strength to survive the elements. Living conditions will get increasingly difficult for them. Jasmine has graduated from the Lucky Bat Elementary School, where she was lucky to have learned something of value beyond textbook knowledge: love and respect for life. It is a moment of glory when the young volunteers from the Golden Bat Conservation Organization receive their awards. Jasmine and her classmates receive the most beautiful certificates of merit on earth. Farming and harvesting the cloud-like crops under the scorching sun is a most demanding way of life. The farmers never get to rest in the rice paddies, and all of these efforts are just to meet their daily needs. The cattle market in Beigang was once a bustling marketplace. The highest single-day transaction record was 1,000 head of cattle. But it is difficult to see any cattle working in the fields nowadays. However, many people are still pampering them. The bats can also be found in factories and even police stations. In Suqing Village, Mr. Wu, a retired teacher returned from Taipei, grows his own vegetables in a garden and insists on not spraying pesticides so the golden bats can live in peace under his pavilion. He treats the bats like his babies. It is the same sky as that over our own hometown. It does make me lost in thought when I compare the present to the past. The traditionally decorated parade float culture is slowly disappearing in religious festivals in Taiwan, and even the golden bats that have been living here for countless generations are also gradually disappearing into the evening sky. In fact, we have lost so many wonderful things. Although I'm looking forward to the summer nights, to the festivals when the village temples are filled with vendors, the modern entertainment evokes my nostalgia for the good old days.
Under the shadows of twilight at daybreak, the golden bats that have been busy all night are returning home in a hurry. It's the etude of the baby bats flying class. They try to keep up behind their mothers with their clumsy wing flaps. The babies try to practice a few more laps before sunrise. Usually, it only takes four to five weeks for the golden bats to develop into juveniles or sub-adult bats. At this time, they are still not experienced enough and often roost too low and become vulnerable to attacks by cats. It's a habit of Wu Jiaotun to look into the woods for that familiar silhouette. It is the secret in her heart and her joy. Two thousand twelve is the one hundred and fiftieth anniversary of the discovery of golden bats in Taiwan. Mr. Zhang organized an international conference for bats to discuss where he has discovered the golden bats since 1995. And scholars from home and abroad gathered here to discuss issues regarding bat conservation. What a meaningful event! Many eyes look up at the sleeping golden bats. Yes, this is the first step to pampering them. It's an old house in winter. The sky looks lonesome without the golden bats flying. They have gradually left for caves in the mountain to hibernate.这个张老师为我们付出很多，应该好好奖励他。来人，快请张老师出场。是张老师来了，快请张老师进来。嗨，张老师。为了感恩你长期保护我们黄金蝙蝠家族Every winter, Mr. Zhang and his folks visit the mountains in their annual lifetime ritual of visiting their old friends. They keep going even where the landslides have cut off the road. All of these efforts are just to make sure they are doing well. When fall turns to winter, the golden bats fly back to the forests above 2,000 meter elevation to hibernate. Many lives are hiding inside the mysterious caves.
The golden bats are hanging there sleeping, but they are not alone. They are accompanied by Formosan greater horseshoe bats and Watasi's bats in the caves. Wu Jiatun is now a junior high school student, so she needs to take the bus to a neighboring village for school. Walking in slow paces, her gentle heart is still thinking of her old friends. Although they have not come back yet, she still looks up, as if they are already in the trees, because they are our old friends forever.